Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. So you guys have asked a lot about what the difference is between a straight and a curved trowel are. And I pretty much only use straight trowels. So I do have a rusty old curved trowel in my toolkit here. And here's all my, you know, fishing lures and stuff like that. But where is it? Down here, we got a crusty old curved trowel. And if you take a look right there, there's easily a good eighth of an inch. Actually, if I do this side, it might be even more. Yeah, it's a good eighth of an inch of concave in this trowel. So the idea behind a curved trowel is that when you use it like this, it doesn't hollow out the inside. It leaves it really flat or actually a little bit humped. So when it shrinks, it winds up flat because the deepest area of shrinkage, especially in, let's go over to this side of the wall, especially on something like a flat joint right here that's got the two tapered edges, what happens is when you leave it like that with the most buildup right here is it shrinks back to pretty flat and you give it a quick little sand and it's nice and flat. Also, corner beads is another place that these get used for. It leaves a pretty nice deep fill in there. But I have found these to not be very effective for the type of jobs I like to do. So I do renovations where I've got tons of crazy joints all over the place. Like let's take a look at this. Right, we've got, you know, a short little flat. We've got stuff all over the place here. We've got things like this. I mean, how am I supposed to use this like that? And then this edge is gonna dig in right there. Or this wall, you may remember this wall. How am I supposed to skim out a surface like this with a curved trowel? It's just not possible. So I always use flat trowels because that's what I need to be able to float out the surface really nicely. So one thing I'd also like to point out is you can't find curved knives. So for huge parts of the US where they only use pan and knife, this isn't even available. That tells you how relevant a curved trowel might actually be to most people. Although there is a handful of Canadians that are in love with these curved trowels. However, I think the only logical place to use these is on something like a full house where you've got lots of mileage, lots of joints, corner beads, flats, where you can just really get the most out of this and let your joints dry at the same time. So just for fun and to humiliate myself a little bit, let's try coating with this hook trowel. So I should actually be doing first coat with this, but I just want to do this anyways. This is my second coat on this thing. feel different and I don't like it. I'm just getting the mud even. So now I'm going to feather my edge. Feather my other edge. And oh, too wide. I went too wide. Man, I am an amateur at these curved trowels. Hmm. I don't like it. Okay, well moving on, let's coat this corner bead. Even though it's already wide enough. Huh, I think I see a problem coming here. Alright, so how do I feather this in with such a sharp curve in my trowel? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. So it's pretty obvious that you have to let each joint dry before you move on to the next one. And if you guys watched my corner bead coating video, you saw that I could really easily, with a flat trowel, blend this into here. But that's just a mess. So let's go grab a flat one really quick. Actually, better yet, let's grab a knife. You guys like to laugh at me using 12 inch knives. God, I'm sounding like the kid that gets picked on too much. Okay. Knives have a curve in them, and you want to make sure that you have the tips that are pointed outwards away from the wall. Both 
looking a little better. Well, we may as well finish it, huh? Lobs. That's looking a little better. Okay, well I was having fun with that hook trowel. Let's do a little more. Just to make sure that the people that actually use and love the hook trowel feel truly ridiculed. Because I wouldn't want anyone to not feel the way I do. That's the right thing to do, right? So let's coat this butt joint now and see how we can do this. So I can either go once down the middle using the curve to build it up there, or I can go once on each side but what I can't do is give the whole thing one nice even coat. And I definitely am not going to be able to feather into here after I finish. But you know, I mean speed doesn't matter in drywall, right? So we'll just coat this one side. And this side. Okay, I gotta go right down the center of this tape, I guess. Beautiful. Huh. That's a little better, I guess. Okay, but let's be serious, because I really don't like this, and we know this isn't gonna work, so. Let's get a trowel that's made for this kind of a job. Back to the box. What have we got? I don't bring out my 14 very much. What else do we have in here? A little baby 10 inch. Carbon 12 inch. 16. Ooh, that's a, that's a good trowel for this job. A 20? That's insane. What are you guys talking about? Imagine a 20 inch curved trowel. All right, so let's get going with this 16 inch trowel. Well, let's take a look at this, because we've got quite the hump here to float out. So again, this is obviously the right tool for the job. Now, I don't mean to be so hard on people who like curved trowels, because, you know, it's a tool for a certain kind of job, and I don't do that kind of work, and I've never gotten good with it. But I also don't think that it's actually a necessary tool because I can do anything that I would do with a curved trowel better with a flat trowel. Let's get this butt joint floated out a little better. Switches in the wall, trying not to get electrocuted. Got another coat on this side here. These big trowels are fun and they'll make a flat joint, but they are not wieldly. prison shank to get right into that corner. What is this, just a coating tutorial now? I guess so. Still, I don't think this is wide enough to really make this disappear yet, so we're going to go down just a little more. But I'm also going to start getting some of this material now off the wall. Feather this 
bottom. I got the material I need for here. Okay. It is now properly loaded. Unlike me, I haven't drank in a long time. But I don't think there's any version of me loaded properly. And right down the center to give it that nice broad flat surface. Wobbledies. Getting a little drywall ASMR going for you guys, huh? Okay, look out camera dude, I gotta get this part. Not enough mud here, I can see my tape. where these big trowels are a bit unwieldy. Sometimes you just can't get everything with it. And you check your blade, little whoop. And you know what, all this other stuff, that's what your sanding pulls for. Shanky. Just get right up in there. Oh, I'm gonna lose my mud here. Losing it. Thank you for the sound effect. So anyways, I now I've got mud in my eye. That's super cool. I can't taste it though. Hmm. Okay. So that's how I like to coat these big, fat, horrible joints. Big trowels, lots of mud. And this is gonna take at least a couple days to dry. So you want decent heat and a fan. And all of a sudden again, we're doing a coating tutorial when this was just about straight trowel versus flat, curved. Jesus, you guys, figure this out. This is what happens when you have way too much chocolate and coffee before you film. It's dumb. And if you like it, that means I think you're dumb because everything is personal in identity politics today in America, Canada. Okay, so thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do that with a curved trowel. Someday, maybe I'll do enough drywall to have like huge long runs to be able to get really good with the hook trowel, curved trowel, but God, I hope not. So anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Till the next video.